Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. My name is Chelsea. Um, a lot of stuff has been happening in the um, the scam world, the uh, transact Nilo life, um, that whole yucky world. If you want like instant updates to this, go watch Julie Anderson. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna watch a little um, a fun little Zoom coaching call thingy for Needle Life on how to grow your Needle Life business. So um, let's um, let's watch how to make your scam scam. <laughs> oh, and quick disclaimer: everything I'm saying in here is my opinion based on what um, the information that I have in my own experiences in MLMs and also information on the FTC and definitions of pyramid schemes, blah, 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 lots of disclaimers. Um, my opinions though, that's what you came here for, right? Also, I'm definitely going to like speed this up because it's kind of a long video. So just a heads up, that's why it's gonna sound weird, okay? And my mystery guest tonight is gonna show you how to absolutely put your business in overdrive. He's my good friend, a past business associate, and I'm pleased to introduce you uh, to Mr. Mike Healy. Mike, you want to take it away? I don't know about taking it away, but I'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll be good. Well, first off, Ray, thank you so much. For That's a weird thing to say, but can we just take a second and uh, look at how cool his mic is, how it's changing colors. I've seen that one. My microphone has a 3D printed case, <laughs> so it's actually just an SM58. Anyways, weird audio stuff. Sorry. Okay, back to the video. I just had to talk about his microphone for a second. The kind words, and I'm so uh, I'm actually so excited to see a lot of names I recognize on here. Uh, I'm going through some of the names, letting people in on the Zoom and things like that. I'm still admitting people as they're coming in, um, but it's it's really awesome to kind of get the band back together in a little bit. You know, it's like some of you guys I haven't got to see or talk to in years. Like Ray, I think you and I hadn't even maybe talked in uh, 18 years, probably close sure. to that, which is which is amazing. So let me give you guys just a quick history because some of you may not know who I am. Um, I'm 56 years old. I got started in network marketing about 28 years ago uh, because I was in the bar business and I hated bartending and became a raging alcoholic, um, was fighting all the time because I have kind of that skill set. I bounced for quite a few years. And then somebody took me to a meeting one time and said, come check this out. I thought it was a job interview. When it turned out it was a network marketing meeting, first company was Excel Communications. I watched a guy get in front of the room that was a former uh, farmer and gave the worst presentation I've ever been through. It was like watching paint dry. And it was like an hour. Has that ever happened to you guys? Have you ever like gone to a job interview and then found out it was actually an MLM? That happened to me for, it was, <laughs> it was during the pandemic and it was a Zoom interview for, you know, a work from home job. And it was for Melaleuca. And I saw it like at the very beginning, I started like getting like suspicious. And then as it kept going, I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely right. This is most definitely a scam. So yeah, that happened. I think I actually, um, I applied for it. It was either on LinkedIn or Indeed. So it was like on one of those like real job platforms. So like people are tricky out there. They'll try to recruit you doing anything. So just be on the lookout for that. And it even happened to this guy. And look at this, 28 years later, he's still in MLMs. Ugh, yikes long and I was just wouldn't wait for it to be over and the last piece of paper he flipped over on the on the flip chart because that's back in the day we had to use flip charts in a hotel it had some money on there and then he basically came out and said he was making like I don't know like three thousand dollars a month in residual income and that's all I heard from a whole hour presentation and it something tripped it tripped, tripped my trigger just like that it went off in my, my my body my spirit and I was yeah I'm gonna have to slow this down a little bit <laughs> but yeah I mean you heard that he made three three thousand dollars a month in passive income yeah, I would that would perk my ears too. But I mean, obviously now knowing knowing what we know about network marketing and how it is like, you know, selling the dream and these income claims that aren't attainable or sustainable, like it's just like wild to me that he still ended up obviously he was good enough at scamming to um to make it to the top, but yeah. It's like if that guy can make that kind of money, I know I can go after this and figure something out. And I, um, I got in and my sponsor, uh, signed me up. It was a younger kid. He was a year younger than me. I was 27. He was 28 at the time. And or he was 26. I was 27 and he signed me up. And this is a true story. Two weeks after he enrolled me, he inherited $3.2 million off of an uncle who passed away. And I never heard from him again. That's a true <laughs> story. And so I was, I basically became what they call ignorance on fire because ignorance on fire will always beat knowledge on ice. And I just knew that that was a Tuesday meeting that I went to and I kept. <laughs> so the guy that 
that put him in here, like inherited $3 million. And then he was like, okay, peace out. Bye. I mean, I would too, but it's, that's crazy. I mean, good for that guy. It's not good. But you, you get it. I don't know why I'm saying this. I just felt like I needed to comment on that. Trying to go to these Tuesday meetings and learn. And that's how I got launched in the business. So you don't have to be an expert. I ended up doing okay. And then I did some stints. And then I finally, after years and years and years of uh, trying and everything, kind of got things going uh, to the point that I have made multiple seven figures in, in the networking now. I uh, was able to raise my kids. I hadn't had, I've had multiple seven figures in networking now. So was that just within the course of the 28 years? See how he phrased that to like, it was like he was being careful and using a little bit of protective language on his end. Uh, that's at least what it sounded like to me. One job in like almost 30 years um, that was just temporary. Uh, you know, I've been able to build teams in the tens of thousands. I personally enrolled over 2,700 people now. And here's what I'll tell you. And I hope you guys, when I say some of this stuff, understand that the principles that you will ever learn from Ray Heron, who I think is one of the masters in this and Fifi Cheek and, and some of the other leaders that you'll hear on here, the principles of the basics never change. Perhaps the delivery method of them d does, right? Like, like you can use the internet now to tell your story. The principles never change. So um, recruit people and you'll make more money and you'll make it to the top and make sure your people that you're recruiting recruit people. Same principles. Where when I was starting, you only would go to a hotel meeting on a, on a weekday and it was just like pulling teeth to get somebody to show up. Now you can text somebody a video, right? That it's so much farther. So the principles always stay the same. It's the power of um, the messaging that kind of gets delivered better. So Ray, do you want me to kind of give people some, go into some training of this and stuff and kind of show them what I do? I'd, I'd love to, Mike, your one, two, three system. I love, I love that. I mean, you got to, it starts with a sizzle call. I don't, most of them on here on this Zoom tonight and perhaps have heard it, but uh, yeah, just share with us and maybe do a little bit of training uh, at the okay. same time. The only thing we I, have to do, you got, to, I've been through your system. It's, it's, it's really, a, it's as good as it gets as far as I'm concerned. But what I really like about it is that uh, we all can do it. I mean, it's just easy. It's one, two, three. Right. <laughs> I like that he calls it a sizzle call. I guess technically I got a sizzle call when I was um, being recruited into Monty. And it was like, oh, yeah, we'll do a three way call and call my upline. And you know what's funny looking back at that? Again, another tangent. Um, I'm really good at this. But the fact that I remember like not liking the girl's upline that I was joining, like I remember like thinking she was kind of eh, and like not nice, I guess. Um, I ended up liking her afterwards once I joined, but of course she was standoffish to me because I wasn't a part of the team yet. And as soon as I joined the team, it was like, yeah, I love bomb, love you, whatever. And then as soon as I quit, I was blocked. So yeah, anyways, same principles, right? Keep going. Okay, so you can see my screen, how to launch your Nilo Life business. Yes, we good. Okay, so let me. Um, and the reason I put this PowerPoint together is kind of to keep my train of thought. Most, most importantly, and I'm going to breeze through some of this now, just as proof that I want to prove to you that anybody can do this business. Uh, hopefully, you can see that picture big enough. That is actually me, practically passed out with all those beer cans and bottles. And the reason <laughs> I put that in here, and I'm not ashamed to put that in here, was that was pretty much the lifestyle that we were running at, and I was completely broke in that photo. Okay, and so I want to say, if this guy can learn this stuff, so can you. Okay. Now, here's the thing is, it like kills me that all the leaders say that, like, if I can do it, you can do it. Like, if this guy can do it, like, of course you can do it. And it's just definitely that, like, trying to pull that, like, relatability in there. But it's like, if you're already to the top, I mean, okay, so Nilo Life is a new company. You know, it was in pre-launch, like, it just officially launched, like, last week or something, um, April 12th or something like that. And it's it's April 20 something at the time of recording this video. I don't know what day it is ever, but um, like what we're already a week into launch. I mean, and before that even happened, people were already like going up in the ranks and they aren't offering anything. So, I mean, they're still, I still don't fully understand what they're offering except for like travel deals. Um, hopefully we get more into that this time, but um, there's a lot of crap going on with Nilo, Nilo Life that I know for sure. Um, and again, if you want updates on that, like um, Julie Anderson has gone like deep into it and she is killing it over there on her channel exposing this company. So go over there. But watch this video first. Stay here. We can all do this together. <laughs> People ask themselves two basic questions whenever they're looking at a business. Is it worth it? And can I really do it? Okay. The good news is, is I have a really great family now. A huge dose of Jesus got, got me out of that lifestyle. 
and my kids are awesome. Uh, they're all bigger than they are in this photo, by the way. I'm still still the shortest guy in the house. Uh, everybody's everybody's uh, moved out and stuff like that. I got to let somebody in real quick, um, you know. And but but because of that, it's been great. Now I, I left. I wanted to put this in here to kind of give you some uh, just a little vision. Right after I joined the networking business, uh, I always wanted a nicer car because I was driving like the rusted out. You know what's funny about this is as soon as I saw this, I immediately was like, wow, what like a douche cadet taking pictures of him next to his car. But I think it's just the way he's standing in that bigger one that like totally makes me mad because then I remember if you guys, if anybody follows me on um, Instagram, um, all it is is pictures of me and my car and me and my fiance. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I like cars. This guy likes cars. That's fine. I get it. I get it. Work hard. Do whatever you want with your money. I get that. I'll let that slide. I just wanted y'all to like hear my thought process for some reason because it's kind of funny. I'm like, oh, hypocrite Chelsea sometimes. You know, at least I admit it. Cars or rusted vans. Um, you know, I had a van that one door didn't hardly, uh, didn't open, had the wood paneling, had 280,000 miles on it. I got one, one daughter in it, that kind of thing. And I remember vision dreaming and I. Side note though. Um, not side note, but to to trail off of that, because I just thought of this as he was like saying this. Um, I bought my Camaro from my regular job <laughs> and MLM did not get that Camaro for me. So you can buy a car with money you get from a regular job. I don't know if you're aware of that. Like you don't have to join an MLM to buy a nice car. It's just like the money is good everywhere. And for whatever you want to spend it on, it doesn't have to be a car. I'm just, I'm just saying. Why? Do, because people always use like a car as like that, like, uh, whatever. Eighties dealership, and I, I took pictures. Uh, I did. I drove one, and I was so scared to drive it because I was so intimidated by the car. I literally went about two hundred yards up the street, turned around, and put it back, and came back. And obviously, the guy could tell that we weren't probably ready to purchase that. And so I had Stacy take pictures with a with a little flip camera of that car. Now here's what's crazy. You fast forward probably 10, 15 years later, as I'm learning networking and finally getting it going. And that Mercedes on the right, I ended up uh, buying. It took you 10 to 15 years later to get networking going. <laughs> Who's got that kind of time, bro? Like, ah, that's wild. But I didn't realize until I accidentally found those photos that those were the, that was the exact looking model that i had driven i didn't even realize that like it actually freaked me out i was like that's really bizarre okay now over my career i've done really well been able to travel the world uh cover magazines public speaking the whole nine yards okay now here's what i'm going to show you uh and one top recruiter awards uh in most of the companies i'm in all right so let's get to the let's get to the meat and potatoes of this because i actually top recruiter awards so you're the top recruiter that's why you're making all this money because you just recruit 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 so you're just that's where you're making the majority of your money through recruiting, right? And that is, you can see the only way you can make it to the top of any MLM compensation plan is if you recruit people underneath you. I've had so many stupid comments saying that you can make money just by selling. And yes, yes, you can, but you cannot make this amount of money. The amount of money that they tell you that you are going to make you cannot make on sales alone. The only way to make it to that financial freedom, the top of the pyramid, the top of the compensation plan is to recruit people. And I cannot say that enough that like just that that was just to all the people that have left, you know, dumb comments like saying that, well, why would you run your business that way? You know, you could just make money by selling things. Um, that's not how that's not how that works. Anyways. OK, wow. You could tell that was on my mind, right? Enjoy doing the training parts of this probably more than anything that I do in the business, okay, is the power of what we do here is all you really have to do, the success principle here is you got to learn how to get a large group of people to do a few easy tasks over a sustained period of time. The key is you have to ask yourself, what are the easy tasks? And you have to make the decision that you're going to be in it for a sustained period. You have to understand that this is going to be a process. Now, all of you guys are familiar with a company called McDonald's, right? Would you or would you not admit that you probably have a good chance that you can make a better hamburger than McDonald's? Everybody would raise their hand and say, 100%. You could drop your burger off your grill onto the ground and it would still be a better burger than a McDonald's burger, right? But the... I, I mean, I wouldn't go that far as to say if you drop on the ground that it turns up better than McDonald's. But saying a hamburger is better 
at home or at McDonald's is very subjective. It, it, it's, it's an opinion, just, just like this piece is. Um, I mean, it's just a weird analogy. Like, it's just a really weird analogy. Maybe we'll see where he's going with this, but I just don't understand the point of saying that, I guess. I never understand anything. And then people get mad at me in the comments for not understanding stuff. And I'm like, it shouldn't be this hard to figure out. Like, it should not be this difficult to explain how you're going to get paid in a business. So, yeah, when I get confused or when anybody else gets confused about a compensation plan, that's a huge red flag. Clearly, I'm in the mood to explain myself before, like, right now. I'm just, I'm getting spicy and, like, reading these comments. They're great. I love it. Keep them coming. But, like, like, just don't be stupid, stupid, okay? <laughs> in the words of Philip DeFranco, don't be stupid, stupid. Okay, thanks. Power of McDonald's is not in their burgers. The power of McDonald's is in their systems. Anybody can plug into what they would call the system of the McDonald's, the franchise itself, how it's structured, how people do things, and they have a very, very good chance of success, right? Because they can bring on someone who's a high school kid who has no business background, no education, no interest probably in hamburgers and plug them right into where they need to be and they can become successful. And I heard a guy say this and it, it changed my... Not necessarily, but I mean, yeah, but I just don't see what that has to do with because that that is a different system. That teenager goes to McDonald's, you put him on the register or you put him, you know, flipping burgers, whatever. You tell him what to do. He shows up. He does that. He leaves. He collects a paycheck. That's not how MLMs work. It's not an exchange for time and money. It's an exchange for time and you hope it becomes money. It's just not the same at all. That's why it's such a shitty analogy. Career in networking, when he said that this, because he was explaining about McDonald's and the power of it, and I applied this to McDonald's uh, or, or network marketing, he said the, si the system is the, oh, sorry, I was trying to let somebody in and I put the wrong one. The system's the leverage by which you turn ordinary people into extraordinary performers. Great businesses do not look for extraordinary people. Great businesses look for ordinary people and leverage them with extraordinary systems. Now, don't get this complicated and thinking that this is going to, I'm going to show you some really crazy AI tool or anything like that. What a system is, is merely a way to get somebody from point A to point B. Now, all of us in direct selling, networking, whatever you want to call it, have also heard people that are, they go, oh, I just, uh, you know, you got to get my people motivated. Okay. This was another point that I picked up that I thought was just brilliant. He said, rather than motivate people to increase productivity, go sponsor mobile reps, go do this. If you create systems that increase productivity, the motivation naturally follows. I want you to take for a second and stare at that phrase. Rather than motivate people to increase productivity, if you create systems that allow people to have increased productivity and simplicity, motivate. You guys want to stare at it together? Let's go. I think I'm going to put it up here. Okay, I'll stare up there. Okay, do you think that made us rich? Let's see. It naturally follows because they're going to get results. Now, I didn't have, I don't have this in the, in the, any of the PowerPoint here, but I want you to think about this. Is the one thing that I learned a long time ago that really began to change my career as I was putting these puzzle pieces together was I learned to become um, activity motivated and not outcome motivated. And by learning to get excited about the process, let the process work for me, knowing that the process will always work, I always got the results. Okay. I was. Does he not think that like every other MLM doesn't do this? Like this is a motivation that like he's doing. It's like, a, well, let's get excited about the activity. And if you do these activities, you'll definitely be successful. And it's like, that's also just not true. It's not always true. And so we need to get off of that part of, of being in a network marketing company and understand that time does not equal money. Activities do not equal money like it does in a regular job. A regular job. You get it. You know what I mean? Um, unless you're in an MLM, then you're going to leave some comment under here that I'm going to debunk later and we'll have fun with that. Always able to recruit people. I was able to join a company once I started to figure this out, that if I just stayed the course and did the activity, the proper activity, I did the right order. I, I showed somebody the right tool at the right time and did it repetitively, consistently. That's what created the results. And I didn't have to think about it. Okay. So, because if you have a good system, you don't need to motivate people. The good part is you can then inspire people. You can have fun conference calls. You can go to events and just hug each other and love each other and talk about stories. If motiv motivation is like a shower, you have to take it too often for it to really work. If you have a good system, 
it, it's just about being consistent because if you have to be motivated every day, this business might not be for you because it's all about being disciplined in the activity. Okay. So this, I'm just throwing some of this. The immediately, the immediate gaslighting of this, like, and by the way, if it doesn't work for you, it's your fault. Like we haven't even like joined yet. Um, I don't know if this is an opportunity call or a coaching call for people that are already on a team, but either way, it's like, yo, this business just launched last week and you're already gaslighting me saying that I will most likely not do the work. And that if I follow these steps, like it'll work, but like, because I bet if all these people follow these steps, there will be a good chunk of them that are, you know, still at the bottom. You can't, you run out of people and you can only make it. Why did I say like people? You run out of people. You run out of people. And then like, you can't, you can't, not everybody can make it to the top of the compensation plan. Like, again, it's like the same thing over and over again. I don't know why I love to do this so much, but it is really interesting. Just, I mean, it's just crazy that these scams can keep going and going and going, you know? Stop out there. Because I, uh, because I think it's important. Now, everybody, if you've ever been in networking or you've been in business or whatever, you've heard about this, everybody calls it a funnel, right? Oh, these guys make funnel. There's click funnels, there's lead funnels, blah, blah, blah. All a funnel really is, if you think about it, it's a series of steps, steps put in a strategic order where it takes your person or prospect on a journey. You basically do this. Now, the process I use is typically three steps that makes them aware of what we're doing. So I might, I might text them something. I send them a sizzle call, which makes them intrigued. And then they typically, we have a conversation and they make the decision of yes or no, they're going to be a member. You want to hear my big closing line? I'll give you my close right now. What do you want to do next? That's how, that's all I say when I, when I'm closing people, if I think that I've shown them enough info, I just say, what do you want to do next? And I I'm on or off. Okay. Now in, in our company, Nilo life, your single most important priority is this little built or this brick. This is the brick right here. This is your freedom picture. If you want that, if you do this again, where are the people in the comments that are going to tell me it's not a pyramid scheme? I'll wait. Actually, no, I'm not going to wait because we got to get through this. Let's go. And you teach this over and over and over. Simple, simple. Get to who get to. Get to who get to. Get to who get to. How do you build a building? How do you build a bank? One brick at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? So if you have something like this, you can you can keep you you understand your goals. Like if you wrote this down on just a piece of paper where you had you at the top and you had your 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 two two front line four next level it doesn't you know and you you know you're just helping those personals that's what we're trying to do we're getting two to get to the matrix might push them in different spots but you understand what i'm saying here okay now this is very simple this shouldn't be hard but i just want to i just try to because i say pretty much the same thing over and over again because i know this stuff works whoever tells the story the most wins now here's what i did go back to simple easy tasks i decided so a long time ago when i made the decision that this was, I was going to make a secondary income and it was going to, I was going to make it worth my while. Like I was going to do the work and I was going to be consistent. I was going to focus only on the activity because I knew that if I did the activity, the outcome would happen. Again, you can't tell the duds from the suds, the zeros from the heroes. If you listen to anything by Jim Rohn, specifically track six on how to build your network marketing business, he says that you, if you work the numbers, the numbers work. Basically law, law of large numbers. If you do something long enough, a ratio will appear. Listen to that track over and over and over. I pretty much have it memorized. So what I believed that was, I was. Right, but you like can't predict the ratio that appears. Like you can't. And <laughs> I don't know that. Well, I mean, I know that many people, but they know the people that I know. So like, it's not, it's not going to happen that way. Like. I know sometimes I say things in these videos where like I have a whole thought process in my head and I don't like clearly explain it in the videos. And again, I see that in the comments. This is going to be a video where I address a lot of the comments that I get, um, which is fine. I get it. But it's just like I <laughs> there's a bigger thought there. And if you think about it, if you think about it long enough, you realize that this is like not a good idea and it's not sustainable, even if you get it eventually you are going to run out of people so it's like just just think about it for like longer than a second okay easily capable of and i've seen in history of everybody i've introduced this to that five contacts a day five days a week is not hard to do and when i mean five contacts i don't care who it is what their background is what they currently do or where they're at it does not matter by the way, five contacts a day, like actually like is hard depending on like how you're choosing to introduce this opportunity to them. Like I don't 
like to talk to that many people a day, especially like depending on your job. Like if you're like an introvert like me, like I love doing YouTube videos. I get to talk to y'all when I want to and not when I don't. So it really works out with my personality, but like, you know, I'm a hairstylist. And so I have to figure out how to turn that on and off. And after a busy day where I've had even just like two clients, because I'm with my clients for a long period of time, I do blonding and extensions. So like when I get home from work, like my brain is like, like shut off. Like I, it's hard for me to go in and then talk to five people and be like, Hey, do you want to join my company? That's not mine. That's actually a pyramid scheme. And like, and then not only that, you're asking them about this, you're presenting this opportunity. And then you, excuse me, you most likely have to defend the fact that you do not think it is a pyramid scheme or scam or whatever, um, whatever might be thrown back at you. Like, hey, is this one of those network marketing companies? I don't like that, whatever. Like you also have to, not only are you asking them about the opportunity, a lot of times you're in there defending it. And it's like, that's exhausting from coming, you know, for, from like the introverts perspective and somebody who does have a lot of anxiety. And yes, I am medicated for it, but it's like, this to me, it just seems so overwhelming. And then so then he would look at me and say, well, then I guess the business isn't for you. And it's like, that's fine. But you're telling me it's simple. But like these simple things are not easy for everybody to do. That's all I'm saying. I promise you, OK, not only that, but they don't always work. <laughs> What you're trying to do is you're trying to work these numbers as fast as you can. Um, there's a great book called uh, the first book I ever read in network marketing that was handed me to handed to me by the number one money earner at the time. I think in of all of network marketing was Paul Orbison. He was making I think at his peak one point three million dollars a month. He was from Danville, Kentucky. I'm a live I live in Columbus, Ohio. We drove to Atlanta for a training on the way back. The guys I was with went to high school with him and stopped by his house. And I was just enamored to have the opportunity to meet this guy. And he opened the door, answered the door in a T-shirt, sweatpants, tube socks, and he had a chew in his lip. And I was just blown away that this was this guy making this kind of money. And that's what he looked like when he answered the door. And he hadn't shaved in probably four days. I was literally blown away. We sit at his living room table. He shows me his downline report because we all used to get paper things. It was the size of his the people he had gotten paid on that month was the size of two phone books si stacked side to side. That's how thick it was on the people he got paid with that month because we didn't have the internet back then. And I found my name. Uh, he goes, Mike, did you sponsor anybody last last month? I said, yep. I gave him my name and it was in alphabetical order. I found this kid and he and he and, he, uh, and I found him and he goes, well, Mike, how long you been in? And I said, I said, I've been in about 90 days. He goes, all right, who got you in? Who got you in? And we tracked it back on a guy he had enrolled eight years earlier. And here he was getting paid on a guy. And I, and I go, you're telling me you got a guy in eight years ago? And you're getting paid on a guy today that I just got in. He goes, ain't network marketing neat. And I'm like, you bet it is. But then I said, I saw he had a bookshelf behind him. And this is me coming out of the bar business. So I didn't read, wasn't a reader, wasn't a leader. And I that story is just so cringy. And like, just that, like, I'm getting paid off of the people underneath me. And for every time they recruit somebody, I get a cutback of that like that's just like I'm at a loss for words right now at how like people see something like that and they're like oh yeah no it's totally like totally legit business opportunity like how what is it in there what is it I just okay I do know because I was there I was there let's like, like let's not like talk shit about everybody that's ever been in a network marketing company because I was in it I was there once I was vulnerable and I wanted to I wanted that to be me I wanted to be the person that made that much money but again we can't all make it to the top of the pyramid and that's just like the reality of it that people below you will always lose money like to some capacity or at least waste lose a frick ton of time and not make any money like at the very least, that's going to happen. And time is valuable to me. So I'm not okay with that. And you shouldn't be either. Like, especially if you're a mom, you should be spending that time with your kids. Like, or if you're a dog mom, you should be spending that time with your dog. You know, whatever it is, like you could spend that time enjoying a walk on the beach or a book, or there's just so many other things that you could be spending time on rather than bugging your friends and family to join the scheme with you. I said, I said, you read all his books. Like it was like some big myth, you know, surprise. And he I said, man, I'd love to learn this. And he walks over and he gives me this tattered, tattered copy of All You Can Do Is All You Can Do, But All You Can Do Is Enough by Art Williams. 
And I remember reading it and it was so basic and it gave you, gave me every principle I needed and everything like that. And to my point of what I was saying with this page was there's a point in there where he was talking about an insurance company that hired this big company to come in, these guys to come in and figure out why they weren't growing, why they weren't working. And they basically came right out and said, you're just not seeing enough people. And they're like, that can't be it. That can't be it. And a guy said, all I want you to do is take your, your 25, a hundred of your salesmen, have them walk out on the street, knock on doors and ask everybody, just ask, say this one thing. Well, that's okay. Let's, let's, let's backtrack for a second as you know, somebody who <laughs> runs her own business or like, I used to have my own salon suite. Now I'm a, a commission stylist, but that's still, that's neither here nor there. Like I get my commission earn my commission. I get my clients based on awareness. So people that know that I'm a bonding specialist in this area and I do extensions and what is going on here. But like, yeah, awareness is part of a marketing funnel just in general for like any business. So, but when people try to, t <laughs> you're not selling these people anything except an opportunity. Able to like talk to more people, like 60 people today ask that. And some people would say, absolutely. I've been looking and open their door and come in. And the company's numbers within a month spiked because they didn't prejudge. They did the right activity that mattered. The only activity that mattered was introducing people to take a look. That's the only activity that matters because you can't, you will go insane thinking you can try to sponsor people. That's what people are confused about when they hear I've sponsored so many people. I haven't sponsored that many people. I have introduced more people than that to take a look, but I did it so fast that the numbers worked that people sponsor themselves. I don't have, I never convince anybody. I never beg anybody and so on. And that's, that's I got, I know I got winded on that one, but hundred con contacts at only a 5% close closing ratio would give you five reps, right? That within that, if you just stay consistent with that, And you basically just said, hey, make, take, send five people a text a day. While you're on lunch break, you could do that. I used to sit on a, a stationary bike with the, the, the job that I said that I had. And I would pedal the bike while I had clients coming because I was a personal trainer. I'd sit on a stationary bike and make phone calls and ask people permission to send them a website. This is before I had, a, I didn't have a cell phone back then, right? Okay, so here's what I'll tell you is I basically have over and over company after company because I don't company jump, by the way. Nobody ever wants to jump companies, but if a company's not doing what I think they're doing stuff unethical or they change compliance or they just go out of business, you can't, you gotta, you, you can take your skills with you. So if you start to realize that a company is kind of like scamming you, they change their comp plan because they're going under and it's not sustainable. You're just going to go to a different company and think that it's different. It's not, it's not different. If it's the same business plan and you see all these companies shutting down and changing the comp plan and changing formulas to cut costs and all that, like how is that not just a bunch of red flags for the industry itself? Like, ugh, wake up. Like, uh, I'm sorry if you're falling for this. Like, it's such a bummer. But like, this is me saying like, it, you have to think about this. Like, if people like you're not you might not be company hopping on purpose but the reason that you're forced out of one company and into another is a red flag and the one thing that that all of these companies have in common is that they're mlms so let's just take a second and think about that that's what i want you to do you might not be able to take your check but you can take your skills so what i have seen over 15 years of doing this tech this way i do this I've seen it work over and over and over. And I had a video and I'm, I, I make sure it's on uh, nilotraining.com at the bottom. If you scroll down to the bottom, I already put that this on that long form page, okay? nilotraining.com. If you scroll down, you'll see this three easy step video. It's like three and a half minutes long. The only three steps that I need to do to build this business, the only three steps that you need to really do to build this business, and it's gonna sound way too easy to have any success, but I promise you if you'll follow them, it works, is, I introduce people with a simple recorded message. The only purpose of that recorded message 
is to pique someone's interest enough to where they want more information to watch a short presentation without overloading them with info. Does that make sense? Then at the, the last step, so, so basically it's sizzle call, which is what we call it, step one. The third, the second step is I send them a short presentation. Short presentation is just, um, the presentation would be that one I have, it says short presentation, it's like 10 minutes long. <clears throat> now I don't go into all the detail of the comp plan, every step, because here's what I'll tell you. If you're going through every single thing, a confused mind does nothing. I tried. Yeah, because it's a red flag. It's a red flag if I'm confused. If you're explaining the comp plan and it's like too much to understand when when I just go to my job and it's like, oh, I make a commission if I make this sale or, you know, I go in and I work for eight hours and then I get paid this amount of money hourly. It's that's easy. That's cut and dry. I understand that. But when it's like, oh, but then if you recruit these people and then you can make this much and then you make this much if they make this much, but then they have to do this. And then if they recruit two people like it's. Yes, a confused mind will do nothing and holding back information because you are worried that they will say no once they have too much information that's not good either like that's yucky don't do that that's gross like that's so scammy like wow skin off all the fat and give them the meat when i do presentations when i do talks when i do everything like that i just want them to focus on the right things the right thing is if they enroll and they purchase a uh, a, a travel portal they're going to get savings. If they refer some people to it, they're going to get it for free. If they take it farther than that, then great. And I always, because what happens is they start to see the community talking about success. They start to hear about people getting checks. They start to hear about, you know, people getting promoted and their curiosity, if they're hungry, will go into asking the correct questions that you have the details on. The third step of this is I typically, I kind of call it the buffet, which I like send them to the nilotraining.com page. The reason for that is my short videos at the top of that one. Now this number two video, by the way, I do have it on a standalone website, which is, uh, which is promoterswanted.com. Honestly though, I want to know like, oh, so you get travel savings. What are these travel savings and how am I getting them just by joining? How much is it to join? Like how much of travel savings do I get? Like, is it really going to be worth it? Like I need the math. I need the breakdown with that little information. I'm still not going to join. I mean, I know some people will, but again, I just, it's. It's so gross to leave information out and then give it to them like after they're already in and like sink them in and be like, oh, yeah, and by the way, you can make money. And like because then it, it. It's just the way you grab and pull them in. It's really manipulative is is what I'm getting at to me. It's that's that's really manipulative, in my opinion, and I don't like that. Promoterswanted.com. And that's the, the presentation video by itself, generic, no sign up, anything like that. And then what I typically do is I follow up with them after that one and I ask them, <clears throat> or I may just automatically say, hey, you may have more questions, go here. Now, here's the thing, if I send them, so they may have watched the second presentation and I send them to the training page, the power of the training page is this, is more times than not, they're always again asking themselves two questions, is it worth doing, can I do it? The whole time I'm doing this process of I sent them a text, I sent them a text to a link to a, to a video. I sent them something else in the back of their head. They realized they could easily do that. I don't, I don't answer every question that they have. And I'll explain that. I have a, a slide for that. I just sent them, I sent them that, <clears throat> excuse me. And on the bottom of that training page, for a reason, that training video is down there because they might go through and see this and see this. And then they're asking themselves, well, what, do I, what am I really going to have to do to build this business? And when I have a three minute video at the bottom to help close them with a simple three step system that they obviously have an aha moment that this isn't rocket science. I don't have to know how travel works. I don't know how it's how a search engine works. I don't have to compare pricing every two seconds. They go, I can probably do that. I mean, we're literally talking somebody joining this business for less than it costs to go eat at a family of four at a Chipotle at, at this point. Right <laughs> now, kind of moving on here. And Ray, if you have anything you want to interact, interject, just keep, I'll, otherwise I'll keep going. You good? You were unmuted anyhow. I'm good. Keep going, brother. Okay. Now, one of the things I will tell you too, is if you want to go old school, uh, find tablets that you have names down on, email lists that you might have, your books and social, social media. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Some of the posts that I put on social media just out there, I typically aren't, am not a lot of time saying, join my business, join my business. I make fun posts. Like the one in the bottom left, I'll read it for you if you can't see it. I made a post that says, for years, my wife and I wanted to travel, but typically had to settle for low budget facilities, subpar transportation and trailer park booze cruises. So I, I kind of made it fun and joking. And that was not, that was a picture I took years ago uh, at.
So yeah, it's more manipulation. I mean, with the whole like the curiosity posts where they get people to comment and ask them questions and then they can, you know, hook them in with with the other stuff he said earlier to get them to join and make it sound way better than it probably is in reality. We call them curiosity posts in the biz, you know. Uh, I went on a vacation to Aruba. I think, uh, Hyatt, Hyatt, I think it was a Hyatt or Hilton or something like that. Really, I think it was a Hyatt. Really, really nice. Ritz. It was a Ritz Carlton. I'm sorry. At Aruba. And I made that post. In the bottom of that post, I could I would say something like, I'm really excited about the new travel platform my friend introduced me to. I wouldn't say something like. See, yeah, he wouldn't say something like the name because if you give that information before before he gives his side of the story, like before he gives his recruitment information, his sizzle call or whatever the hell it is, people can Google it and then they'll see my videos and Julie Anderson's videos and um, Alana's videos and just like everybody's like anti MLM videos talking about how like scammy this is. So yeah, they wouldn't want to tell you that because you're not allowed to Google it. It's information control. Don't Google it. I'll tell you what you need to know. Don't worry about what the rest of the internet says. I got everything you need to know, which is very little information, by the way. Go buy my travel portal, right? Because all I want to do is create curiosity. And you can do this. And I will, what I will do too, just, I'm just giving you tips to kind of get in front of people. Okay. So I, I no matter what, I, I, I take my phone and I text people. That's first number one priority is I just go through and I pre make a message. I send it to myself. It'll be something like, hey, um, hey Lisa, I need your help. Um, I'm trying to win a company contest. Don't know if you help me or not, but all I need you to do is listen to this recording and I get credit for it. Thanks, Mike. When you ask people for help, you create curiosity and you give them. So now we're just lying to people. Cool. Okay. Like that. That's great. Some, a, a small task. Most people want to help you, but I just basically gave her curiosity to do that. Now, here's the thing. You can't say the wrong, wrong thing to the right people. A lot of people will not take action because they're trying to be perfect. Stop it. Just stop it. I say some of the dumbest things. I text some of the dumbest things and I joke around all the time to make it fun because if this business isn't fun, I'm out, period, right? If it becomes too much work, count me out. I want to have fun doing this. I'll sit at my pool all afternoon and send texts to people. The other thing I love to do is this, is I love to leave audio texts. In fact, I started doing- You know what I love to do? Sit at my pool and not work. That's what I like to do. More towards audio text than just because you can convey more enthusiasm without telling somebody what I'm in or how it works. I would make, I would take my phone, maybe go to Facebook Messenger where you can leave an audio message. And I would say, hey, Ray, Mike Healy, how you doing, man? Hey, listen, I know you're busy. And I know you got a lot of stuff on your plate, but I had a friend of mine introduce me to something. I was totally blown away by this. If you get a second, it's really short. I want you to listen to this recorded message I'm about to text you. I'm telling you, you, you got to tell me if you see like what I, what, what I see, you'll see. Tell me about that. You see how I messed up and I don't care. And I push, push send. I don't re-record it. I sound like ignorance on fire on purpose. You have to sound like you're going insane half the time. Read the first chapter, if you don't believe me, read the first chapter of the book, How I Went From Failure to Success in Selling by Frank Bettiger. Best. Well, that's good advice if you want to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> like, just start doing it. You'll get better as you go. But, like, this is not good because this is like leaving out information to get people to join your scam. Again, in my opinion. They're joining your scam. That's what you're trying to do. It's what you're doing with these people. I don't like it. Thing you can read. How, you, how I went from failure to success because it was all about enthusiasm. That it's all about enthusiasm. <clears throat> if you enthusiastically leave an audio message to somebody, they will listen to what you have to add, what you sent them almost 100% of the time. Okay. Now, real quick, just so you, I'm clear on this, that sizzle call I know works because I built another travel business with this five years ago using the exact sizzle message. I just tweaked it a little bit based on what we had. Okay. I have at least a 75. What travel business was he in? World Ventures? That's gross. That's just a guess. I don't know. I don't know if that's where he was in. That's just my thinking because I know that's another travel MLM. Percent listen through completion because I see a report when I, when I send it to somebody. I see the time somebody called in and how long they listened. It's nine minutes long. And I see nine, 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 one, nine, nine, two, three, seven, nine, 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 and on and on. The reason it works is because I psychologically scripted it to uh, and, and get someone's someone's attention because that tool is the tool you can use to disarm anybody that it's not something worth at least investigating that's the key you're trying to get someone to want to investigate why you're going nuts on their recorder why you left the crazy man message by doing that you can then send them to step two 
and they will watch step two about 80 to 90% of the time because you piqued their interest in the first place. That's what I figured out. What I figured out was, and, and I, and I can, and I sped, I can speed my recruiting process up because you'll be shocked at how many people, and I used to do it. Speed your recruiting process up. Cause it's all about recruiting, right? Just let's keep highlighting that little detail that that's all it's about is recruiting. You would be what they call the killer bees. You would badger and beg people to join the thing. You would just stay on them and stay on the same person. Oh, I got two people in the pipeline. I'm going to call Mary on Tuesday. And you wait till Tuesday to call Mary back. And you never talk to anybody else. I'll move through 50 people at the pool Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Now, the other thing too, don't load your whole Facebook, social media, everything up with just business stuff. Like I put different things on there. I might put me and Stacy, my wife, uh, standing on the stage. I put pictures of my family on there. You can't make it look like you're just, you want to engage with people just to put them in something. Most of my pictures on my Facebook page are just me having fun, me doing something dumb. And that's what we're. Which is good because technically you're not supposed to promote MLMs through Facebook, at least not if you have a business page. So it would have to be your personal page. But um, I know like it's kind of like against the rules to do that on TikTok as well. You can't, you can't promote MLMs on TikTok. So I know with like Meta, it's different if it's like a business profile versus if it's not, but still, yeah, you know what? How about we just don't don't promote scams on social media. How about that? It's because people are there to be entertained in most cases, not overwhelmed, but I will introduce people, but I will find people and I will leave them excited audio messages asking them for the thing. Okay. Now here's, here's the other thing I will tell you this. I'll, I'll tell you, this is how I answer questions. And I'm going to slow down on this because I don't want to, uh, I got to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from, from this. I always ask myself instead of always, yeah. instead of always answering something for somebody one second i gotta meet that guy instead of always answering every question everybody always has by them calling me me taking 20 minutes out of my day to talk to them and answer questions there's nothing wrong with building a relationship it's different i always ask myself is there a video a tool a recording a zoom that's already been done that will answer that and here's why the key is to get a large group of people to do a small eat few easy tasks over the same period of time large group can become overwhelming if you do it wrong and if you don't set them up first in place, then what happens is, here's the thing too, if they come to me for every single answer, they will always be dependent and never become independent. How I have always made people. So don't recruit people too fast or you'll get overwhelmed, right? Easily independent was I, if they asked me a question, if they called me, I answered the phone, don't get me wrong. But then when they asked me a comp plan question, if it was something I could easily answer, I would say yes, but I would always try to say, Here's a good video that explained it in detail that you might want to watch. Here's why that person may be in the business for an hour and somebody asked them that question. So they think they need to know it. I've been in a, I've been in business a lot longer, but I answer them with use this tool. Guess what? My new person can automatically do instantly. They can, they, they have. The fact that you have to be an expert when you're in the business for an hour is just awful. Like that's, oh God, like why? Oh, just why? Why? There's no pressure for them to learn anything. And I know that sounds strange to kind of hear how I say that, but I learned to try to get my people that I put in my organization systems dependent. That way, when we did do Zooms, they did conference calls, most of it was just talking about fun, dreaming stuff. The stuff that really matters, that really moves the needle is your vision. Like my vision is a Bentley. My wife's cousin has a black Bentley that's 1100 horsepower. It'll go 220 miles an hour. I want one. Okay, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> Nobody needs anything with 1100 horsepower. That's an insane amount of horsepower. Basically, nobody needs that. And that's just something I always say. Like, it's cool as shit. Don't get me wrong. Okay, here's the thing. This guy doesn't need 1100 horsepower specifically. I just, I am saying he doesn't deserve it for all the amount of people that he's scamming. That's what I'm going to go with. He does not deserve to have something that badass because all he's doing is scamming people to get it and I don't like it. So... <laughs> New goal, new goal. Like I'm talking tears to your eyes, gorgeous. And I've always liked those, but when you see one that's 1100 horsepower in action, I mean, you stomp on the pedal and that will reverse the rotation of the earth. If you believe that, like, it's just insane how gorgeous this thing is. That's something, can I send texts at lunchtime or while I'm sitting at the pool or whatever, every day, every day, knowing at the end of that process, I'm getting a black Bentley. You tell me. Your goal might not be that, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm stretching myself on this one, right? So I typically do, and here's the thing, this is the company's brand new. So there will be better presentations that come out. There will be better training videos that come out. There will be better everything that continues to improve. It just is natural progression. It's a natural evolution of how this business will grow, okay? 
you got to understand that. <clears throat> Last couple things. Here's the problem with network marketing is it looks so good on the outside, but you don't realize a lot of times until you're in it that you have to roll up your sleeves and get dirty and get in it. And I don't mean be unethical. I mean, you got to, if you want to, you want to dig, you know, you need a ditch dug. And whose fault is that? Because you just told us how simple it was. 10 feet deep and 100 feet long, you got to grab a shovel and start digging, right? I just happen to think that using these type of tools, a three-step system, it gives you a backhoe versus just using your own shovel. But I, I always try to keep this in perspective, put this slide in here. When you begin in this business, you're putting 100% of your time and effort into this thing, and it doesn't look like it's worth it. Because you put two reps in, in two months, and you're like, I may be insane for pursuing this dream. This might be the dumbest thing I've ever thought of. My family thinks I'm crazy. I can't believe they aren't right that I quit my bartending career to do network marketing. I must be a complete idiot. Guess who has, doesn't have a job? Guess who doesn't wakes up when they're done sleeping, not when they hear an alarm clock because they were dumb? This guy, right? But your personal output at the very beginning is where it hurts the most and show. Can we stop shaming regular jobs? Again, I know I've said that in another video, but let's not shame the fact that people have a regular job and use alarm clocks because like that's totally fine if that's the life you want to live. It's what appears to be the least amount of uh, rewards. But what happens is as you take off, in my opinion, is there's a thing called the law of 100. That if you do whatever it takes to get your organization in a relatively short period of time, over 100 total people, you'll start to get the 80-20 rule kicking in your favor. As I watch this happen, the amount of time it takes you to go from four reps to 50 reps might be six months. But from 50 reps to 100 reps might take you three months. From 100 reps to 1,000 reps might take you a month. Like, it's just weird how this is. Just go multiply a penny over and over and over again, 30 days, you get it. But the valley of death is that little portion right here is where we lose most of the people that just don't have the, the, the guts to stick it out. If you do the work, you do the activity, you'll do it. Because it shouldn't take that much work to have, to make no money. <laughs> you know, it's just like such a waste of time. Last couple slides. All you gotta do is look at some of the people that we recognize as some of the most successful in their sport. They've done things like missed over 9,000 shots. The reason he's made so many and won so many games and everything is because he took shots. He kept shooting. He kept shooting. Gretzky, you miss 100 shots that they don't take. If you don't send somebody a text asking them to listen to a short sizzle call, which is not painful. You're talking about scores. These men already got paid just for being there, whether they made the shot or not. Like, that's... Let's compare things to Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan, like two of the top people in sports and like hockey and basketball. Really? That's not, not a fair comparison. That's not the same at all. You won't have it. And this is a great slide, but it's painful for me as a, as a, as a high State Buckeye fan, but Bo Schembechler was Michigan's head coach. Those who stay will be champions. What you have to make the decision of is are you going to stick around long enough for your results to, to, to mean anything? Are you going to do the simple things over a sustained period of time and just stay mentally excited? Plug into the conference calls. Well, what you're doing, what the purpose of the conference calls are is not necessarily to train you every single time because you typically don't learn anything, but you may hear that one encouraging story that keeps you in one more day, one more week, one more month that you start, you start getting that business going. The thing that keeps you motivated when you were talking about how nobody needs motivation to keep going, they need simple steps. Now it's not about steps, it's about motivation. Which one is it? Like, I think you don't even hear what you're saying right now. And you're going to now go out, get after this thing to the point that you're making money. You're making money that's worth it. You've got people that are getting in and they're making money. And now the stories are getting out there. So Ray Heron, I know I went through a lot. It's probably way more than you expected me to throw out at you tonight. So if I no, went over, I apologize. But if it was good, good. It, it was wonderful. I enjoyed every bit of it. And I hope everybody did. Do you have the ability to raise your hands or clap for Mike? I don't know. Mike, you're controlling that there. Can they raise their hand if they uh, enjoyed what they heard I tonight? I think they can. I think they can put stuff in the chats maybe too. Anyway, Mike, uh, I'm so glad you're on the team. Honestly, everything you said makes all the sense in the world to me. Like I said, I realize my, uh, my limitations without a doubt. And uh, I want more than anything else for those of you on this call to be successful. Because if you're successful, Mike and I and Phoebe will be successful. Okay? So we're your biggest cheerleader without a doubt. Yeah, because you'll continue to get higher into the pyramid and to the comp plan as long as the people below you are successful like that's that's how that works like you put up uh, the, the the real key to success here it's personal sponsoring and unifying those people that's all there is just sponsor a couple of people get them unified then you're qualified for everything you're going to get paid i mean there is some other qualifications that come later down the road but you can become a multimillionaire by just doing what i just said sponsor people when I just watched Julie Anderson's video and she was like, this is a literal pyramid scheme, her her one of her latest videos on Needle Life, like, I will repeat that for her. This is a literal pyramid scheme, in my opinion. But all they're talking about is recruiting. They're not offering anything.
I mean, they're saying they are, but like every single business building call is about about recruiting and that's it. Uh, you have an automated system here, one, two, three. Uh, they, they can get to it by nilotraining.com, right? Uh, yeah, it's at the very bottom of that page, nilotraining.com. Yeah, nilotraining.com. I mean, it's a, it's a great website. <laughs> uh, I'm excited, really I am. And I know that uh, Fifi is as well, Donna Rainey out of Texas. I know that you're enjoying this too. It's like Mike said, you can't say the right things. You know, you can't say the right things, the wrong people can't say the wrong thing to the right people. People, I've always said this, and I learned it from probably Jim Rohn too. You know, he was my personal mentor, fortunately. And, uh, you know, he said, it's a timing issue with people. You're just looking for people that are looking for you. You're in the sorting business, not the convincing business. That's why I like a step one, two, three. We're just sorting through the people, that's all. Where the time gets right for them and you've got the magic words and your little quick video, uh, people can see themselves going, well, like I said at the beginning of the call, I mean, who don't want to go to movies? Uh, we all travel some and uh, sporting events, we go to sporting events, we go to concerts. I mean, everybody does what we're, we've got for $59 a month. And we allow them to do it at a great discount in some cases. Uh, I mean, I already see these posts from most of you that's active if you're online, and I've been encouraging you. You know, I did that the last call. You've got to be on these VIP overviews. They're all recorded. If you can't catch them live, go back and watch them. It's the glue that sticks you in this business. But to have an automated system like Mike has put together here for us, it's wonderful. Do you have to use it? No. No, you don't. You can just dig it out like I've had to do for 35 years. I promise you, it can be done. But... Things have changed. They've changed drastically. People don't open their homes like they used to for me to come in and do a meeting. And nobody wants to go downtown. They can't find a place to park or they got to pay an expensive valet parking to go to a meeting. I've got to rent the room that costs thousands of dollars. People just don't do that as a rule anymore. Everything has changed. This company, Needle Life, you see the artificial intelligence. I see it every day. I mean, you can't add things this quick, Mike, if, if, if there's not some technology there involved and some real smart, real smart thinking. So Mike has just found a real expedient way for you and I to talk to the world when you talking about can you send out five texts a day no doubt in my mind you can uh, you could send out 10 you could probably some of you could send out 20 or more let's just sort through the people and find those that are looking for us and they'll realize the value in this and raise their hand and say i want to be part of this well that ended abruptly but yeah so nilo life the new pyramid scheme um you guys don't join this this is not going to end well it is the top leaders that created this company were from Transact Card in Finmore, which was previously like two other debit card scams that never, never came to fruition. And not only that, like they started making Nilo Life like before the announcement of Finmore and, and all that. And this is stuff that Julie covers in her videos. Like these leaders are not bringing you down the right path. Somebody left me a comment that talked about how she felt like these leaders didn't mean anything didn't didn't mean to harm anybody and they started needle life because they felt bad for all the people that lost money and these the, the but but like how can you how can you justify that this and then this company is all about recruiting just like that one was so i just i hope I know sometimes I get a little bit spicy. I know that. And if you are waking up and if you you were part of one of these scams, I hope you're seeing it now for what it is. And if you and if you're starting to ask questions, leave them in the comments. Julie is a safe space. I'm a safe space. Any anti MLM creator is a safe space for you. So please, please watch out. Be diligent. Ask a lot of questions. And if somebody doesn't want to answer it, take that as probably the biggest red flag that there can be and don't get scammed. So I hope you guys have a wonderful um, day, week, whatever. And I, um, I've i got some more stuff to film. So, But first, I must charge my camera, I guess. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.